This is Enoshima. If you've never heard of it, get ready. It's about to be one of the places you'll want to visit. Konnichiwa everyone, we're in Enoshima and I'm extremely excited to convince you as to why Enoshima should definitely be another place on your list of places to go to when and if you come to Japan, especially to Tokyo. My name is Hannah and this is What You Hannah Do, Enoshima. What you hannah do, what you hannah do when they come for you? As usual, before I get to the list, let me tell you a little bit about Inoshima. Inoshima is a small island and town in Fujisawa, Kanagawa. It is only 4 kilometers in circumference and 60 meters in elevation, but there's so much to see and do. It's only about an hour and a half to get to by train from major train stations in Tokyo like Shibuya, Shinjuku, and Tokyo, so it's really not that far. Like the other places on this playlist, Enoshima is an amazing place to go to for a one-day sightseeing tour from Tokyo, especially if you're looking for a very different atmosphere compared to the city. If you watched our Kamakura video, Enoshima is this island. So we could have put Enoshima on that list of things to do in and around Kamakura, but we felt like Enoshima deserved its own video. You can clearly see Enoshima from Shichirigahama Beach, and now we're here. <laughs> So how do you get to Enoshima? You take a train from any of the major train stations in Tokyo and make your way to Katase Enoshima Station. Look at this station, it's super cool. They even have jellyfish. From here, you take a 15 minute walk to Enoshima Island by crossing through the Enoshima Benton Bridge. Very scenic bridge. You can also take a bus or drive to the island if you choose to. Okay, now let's get to the list. Number one, Benzaiten Nakamise Street. Benzai Tenakamise Street is marked with the bronze torii gate that was originally made of wood but was then rebuilt into bronze in year 1821. This gate is now a designated cultural property of the city. This street is Enoshima's main tourist street and it is lined with souvenir shops, restaurants, street food stalls, Japanese inns, and other stores. I love this street because it's super charming and full of character. And you know it, I also love this street because of the street food. Here are my top street food items you should definitely try. Tako Senbei. <laughs> this is super cool. You can clearly see the octopus in the cracker. And I'm really glad we got to this early because there's usually a very, very long line to get one of these things. This is just a normal taco senbei, so octopus rice cracker, but they have a larger one. So this is one of the novelty snacks that you can get here at Enoshima. Itadakimasu. Mm. Mm. Very, very crispy, very crunchy. Breaks off really, really easily. I would say it's very lightly seasoned because the taste of the octopus is king. It's number one. Love the texture, love the flavor. I feel like it's just right because if it's too flavorful, it would be very hard to finish the whole thing. Mm. Perfect snack. No wonder people line up for this. Yummy and fun. <laughs> mm. Next, manju. I just learned that there are two types of manju in this shop. There's the brown one and the white one. The brown one has brown sugar and the white one has white sugar. So one of the more popular things to eat here in Noshima. Mm. Mm. Look at that. Really soft, really fresh, generous amount of sweet and red bean filling. This is delicious. It's not super sweet, just right. Mm. <laughs> and one more for dessert, ice cream monaka. Monaka is a traditional Japanese dessert where they have a thin wafer up here and they have some sort of filling. In this store, you can choose the flavor of ice cream. So it's either matcha, vanilla, or another red bean type of ice cream. And then you can also choose the type of sweet and red bean paste with it. I heard that this is the best ice cream monaka here in Enoshima. Mmm. Mm. Oh, wow. 
This is very sweet. I love that the matcha ice cream balances everything out. The wafer is extremely thin, so it's super duper crispy, which I love. So it's a mix of smooth and crispy textures with the azuki or the red bean paste. <laughs> it might be a little bit difficult to eat if you have sensitive teeth because you're going to bite into the ice cream. <laughs> but I don't have any sensitive teeth. This is delicious. <laughs> So now that we have a little bit of fuel in our stomachs, Benzai Ten Nakamisa Street also leads us to the next place on this list. Enoshima Shrine. Enoshima Shrine was built in year 552 at Iwaya under the order of Emperor Kinmei. It consists of three smaller shrines, Hetsumiya Shrine, Nakatsumiya Shrine, and Okutsumiya Shrine. Enoshima Shrine is regarded as the holy place for Benzai Ten, one of the seven gods of good fortune in Japan. Out of the seven gods, she is the only female among them, and she is considered the patron goddess of eloquence, water, knowledge, artistry, and music. So a lot of artists visit her. There is also a very famous love story between Benzai Ten and Gozuryu, a five-headed dragon that used to plague the city but then fell in love with Benzai Ten when she arrived on the island. He asked her for her hand in marriage, and she only agreed to it if he stopped terrorizing the island and instead protect it. Now, Gozuryu is said to watch over the city with her, which is why you will see a lot of dragons on the island, which is also why there is a lover's hill and dragon lover's bell on the island where couples put locks to commemorate their love. If that's your thing, go for it. There's also a lot of history in all of the three shrines, so I highly suggest coming and learning about it. It's super interesting. Pro tip, if you do decide to come to Enoshima, please wear your most comfortable pair of shoes because there will be a lot of climbing and walking to get to the three shrines. Now on to the next place on our list, the Iwaya Caves. To get to the caves, it's a little tricky. Not tricky in a shady or dangerous way, but you do have to climb up to the top of the island and then go back down around 200 steps to the back of the island facing the sea. You can take a ferry from the mainland if you think going up and down is too strenuous, but the ferry schedule may be a little erratic. Now about the caves, the Iwaya caves were eroded by the sea, but was then elevated above the water by repeated earthquakes. Super cool earth things. In year 552, an oracle encouraged Emperor Kinmei to build a shrine in the Iwaya caves. A lot of powerful samurai and well-known monks made pilgrimages here. It was actually a lot more difficult to get to back in the day with all the jagged rocks. But now that it is a famous tourist spot and the number one spiritual site on Inoshima, they have made the caves easier to get to. There are exhibits on display here explaining the history and culture of Inoshima, and it's just an amazing place to see considering how it was originally made with the erosion and the repeated earthquakes. This cave has long been believed to lead to the icy cave of Mount Fuji. So can you imagine just going through these caves down here and then eventually getting to Mount Fuji? That's so cool. And the other cool thing about this cave is Minamoto no Yoritomo, the first shogun of the Kamakura shogunate, he used to come here to pray. That's why these caves are so sacred. And if it's not busy, since the caves get a little bit dark, it's pretty dark. They gave us this really cool, like nifty candle holders to bring throughout the cave. But I heard if it's really busy, they don't do this. So we came at a perfect time. There are two caves and you'll have to exit one cave to get to the other cave. So do keep that in mind. Cave one is where you will see the birthplace of the shrine and some ukiyo-e Enoshima paintings. And cave two is where you get to see the dragon lighting show. I love how they decked out this cave. <laughs> so magical. And when you clap, the dragon roars. <laughs> Just outside the exit of cave two, you will stumble upon what they call the Chikokahuchi Abyss. This area was created by the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923 and is now a very popular fishing spot for locals. You can also get some really amazing views of the ocean and Mount Fuji on a great day. We've burned all of that fuel from the snacks that we ate earlier. It's time for us to go back, but it would be a little bit difficult to go back 
up and then down the mountain again to eat. So since the weather is great today, we can use the Inoshima ferry boat and it's 400 yen per person and it only takes 10 minutes from here, from Chigogafuchi Abyss, back to the entrance where there's a lot of restaurants. So only 10 minutes, I think that's a good deal. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do right now. After all that climbing and learning, it's time to eat. So on to the next thing on our list, food. Since we're back in this area, it's time for really good food. So Enoshima, like Kamakura, is known for their shirasu. And shirasu is these small fish, it's white bait. Right now, it's not harvesting season or fishing season, so they don't really serve just your raw white bait or raw shirasu. They are serving us boiled shirasu. So I ordered it in a fried version, which is a shirasu kakiyage, and it's also topped with two boiled shirasu. And we also ordered something that's quite famous in this area, which is ikayaki, which is just grilled squid. I'll save the best for last. I'm going to try the ikayaki first. Itadakimasu. Yes, it's seasoned in soy sauce. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, sometimes squid can be a little bit tough. It's very soft and very, very flavorful. The soy sauce is a little bit sweet, not too sweet, just right. Perfect sauce for this squid. Oh. Mm. Absolutely delicious. I can taste a little bit of the charcoal in the tentacles, a little crispier than the squid ring. Highly recommend. Mm -hmm. Miso soup, delicious seafood taste. Mm. Next up, we have the shirasu kakiyagi don. So this is just deep fried shirasu on top of rice. If you're afraid of trying shirasu, this is the perfect way to eat it because you actually won't see the fish anymore. You'll just taste it. Wow, very, very delicate flavor. Usually small fish like this tastes a little bit bitter, but this one doesn't taste bitter at all. It's very lightly seasoned, so it's only mildly salty. It's very soft in texture with a light flavor of the ocean. That's it. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Mm. Once again, absolutely delicious. Very crispy tempura. I actually don't know which I like better, if it's the grilled squid or this. Both equally delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared of the shirasu, very delicious. Sauce is a perfect balance between sweet and salty. Ties this whole bowl together beautifully. All the textures, all the flavors. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Now that we're super full, we're gonna go back up to the top of the island to go to the next place on our list. The next two places on our list are right next to each other, so we'll see you there. When I said I would be going up the island again, did you get exhausted for me? <laughs> well, there's an escalator you can use to get to the top called the Inoshima Escar. It's 360 yen per person and it will take you right up. So no need to hike up twice if you do decide to do the exact same things in the same order as this video. That's the first escalator. There's a second and a third. So do <laughs> keep that in mind. Okay, the next place on our list is the Inoshima Sea Candle. We wanted to wait for the sunset before going up the sea candle, so we decided to grab some French toast from Lon Cafe, a quaint and popular cafe near the sea candle. The French toast was delicious, and right outside the cafe were spectacular views of Kamakura. Now time to go up and see the sunset. If you're into view decks like us, you will love the Inoshima sea candle. It's a popular symbol of this area, and you can see it so prominently from the beaches that surround the island. It's 59.8 meters high, and located on top of the island, making it 119.6 meters above sea level. Right now, we're at the view deck. So if you really love view decks like we do, 
This is great. You have a 360 degree panoramic view of Sagami Bay and it's stunning, especially on a very, very clear day. You can see a lot of Kamakura from here. Also, you can see a lot of the sea from here, which is beautiful. And it's golden hour right now, so it's absolutely perfect. There are two view decks. This is the indoor deck and there is an outdoor deck, which is a level higher. So if you want to take in that, wind that's where you should go but if you're a little bit you know you feel cold easily then the indoor deck is just as perfect as the outdoor view deck If you're soaking in the views, it's time to go down and enjoy the garden where the Inoshima Sea Candle stands, and also the last place on our list, the Inoshima Samuel Cocking Garden. In year 1862, during the Meiji period, English merchant Samuel Cocking established this botanical garden, which is why it has a mix of European and Japanese influences. There are a lot of seasonal flowers to enjoy throughout the year, but if you do decide to visit this garden anytime from November to mid-February, you get to enjoy Shonan no Hoseki. <laughs> which is the illumination that they put up yearly with the winter tulips. If you're coming here with your significant other, it's super romantic. And if you're coming here with family and or friends, the illuminations will be just as magical too. Lots of places for a spectacular photo. I know in a sense it's so simple because it's just a tunnel with a lot of Christmas lights and twinkle lights, but it's just gorgeous. Quite magical if you ask me. It feels like you're in some sort of galaxy. So pretty, giving me happy hormones. Wow. And there you have it. Enoshima. I had so much fun this day. The weather was beautiful, the views were absolutely spectacular, food and snacks delicious, and we got to experience and do some really cool things that were not exactly planned, but didn't feel rushed at all. A super chill and awesome day. What do you think about Enoshima? Are you going to go? And oh, this is a map of the island and the places we went to in the video. No need to take a train or bus within the island. Just wear your most comfortable pair of shoes and enjoy! So yeah, this is Inoshima. If you like shopping, there's something for you. If you like learning, there's the shrines and the Iwaya caves. If you love just chilling, there's so many restaurants and cafes in the area. And if you love just looking at flowers or being around nature, being around the sea, this place is perfect. There's something for everyone here on this island. I highly recommend you come here for a day trip because there's just enough time, especially if you're coming from Tokyo. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you want to see more content about Japan, you know what to do. So until next time, Janet and see you in the next video.